My name is Alan Hawes, and this is PSOC 101. Let's get working on the kit. The first thing we need to do is create a new project in PSOC Creator. In the dialog, I can give my project an appropriate name and choose the target device. Because I'm using the 042 kit, I need to select the PSOC 4100 slash PSOC 4200 design, and then choose a template for the project. In this dropdown, I can either choose an empty schematic or one that's pre-populated with all the usual MCU functions. Because we're learning from scratch, we'll make use of an empty template for now. After clicking OK, you will be magically transported to the land of PSOC with a blank schematic page. If you see blocks with titles like UART and I2C, then you forgot to choose an empty template. Go back and try again. If you're using a new version of PSOC Creator, the new project dialog may look a little bit different, but that's okay. This project is going to be an LED blinky where we flash the LEDs from firmware. This is known as the hello world of embedded programming. On the right hand side of the screen is our component catalog with more than 100 pre-verified special functions. In the search box at the top, enter the string PIN and you will be presented with matching components. We need an output pin and you simply drag and drop it into your design. To set up the pin, you must double click to open its customizer dialog. Each component has a customizer that allows you to configure the functionality. In this dialog, I will give the pin a name that I can remember, pen underscore green. And then I'll turn off the hardware terminal because we will be driving this pin directly from the firmware. I'll show you how to control the pins from the PSOC hardware in a future lesson. You can see the complete index of lessons on cypress.com slash PSOC 101. We're going to drive an LED from this pin, and because the LEDs on the Pioneer kits are active low, meaning they sink current to light the LED, I'll set the initial state to high so that the LED is off. Press OK to commit the changes and close the dialog. The LED on these kits are three color RGBs, and so I'll make two copies of this component and rename them to blue and red respectively. Now I need to choose the physical address of the pens. That happens in the resources file. Double click it to open it. Here you see the pens that we added to the schematic. I can drag each entry onto the picture of the chip or I can choose the pen from the drop-down menu. My hardware is now configured and I can build this design and it will generate the helpful C language functions to control the pens. These functions are placed in the generated source folder. You can see each of them for the pens that I placed. In the main.c file, I can add a little bit of code for this application. All the setup is handled by the tool so I can go straight to using the generated functions to toggle the red pen. There is a write function and a read function. For this project, if I read the pen state and write its inverse, I will toggle the output. There is a handy delay loop function called CYDelay which allows me to do nothing for a number of milliseconds. In this case, I'll delay for 500 milliseconds also known as half a second. I need to build again and then program my board. As I've already plugged the Pioneer kit into the USB port on my computer, I'll just press the program button. The tool knows that I made edits in main.c and so it will automatically save the file and rebuild the firmware before it programs the board. Now you can see the LED blinking on and off once per second. See if you can reproduce this project for yourself. Then try to modify it a little bit to make it interesting. You could change the color of the LED and write to one of the other pins. You could change the duty cycle so the light is on a little bit longer than it's off. Or you could make it blink faster or slower, whatever makes you happy. The key is to understand and develop the learning of writing to these pins directly. As always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore Hawes at cypress.com with your comments, suggestions, criticisms, and questions.